Parenting Junkie. Hey guys, you're watching The Parenting Junkie, the place to go to love parenting and for parenting from love. Today I want to talk to you guys about the upcoming holidays and how we as intentional thoughtful parents can prepare and think about how we want to approach this gift giving time. For any number of reasons, some of you might not be giving gifts this year or getting gifts and I just want to say that is just fine. I think it's wonderful when we step out of the materialistic paradigm and we're able to give, you know, more spiritual, emotional gifts that don't involve items and spending money. Um, so if that's your case for whatever reason, then that's great and that's wonderful and power to you. But many of us are going to be giving and getting gifts and we want to think about what types of gifts really benefit our home and the message that is implied in giving them. Now, it can be so much fun to give a kid a new toy or to watch our child receive a new toy from grandma and grandpa or friends. It's really that childish delight that lights up in them and it's a joy to watch. But I do think it's important for us all to be mindful of what items come into our home because I believe that everything in our life, be it things that we spend time on or things that we own and host in our home space, and has a, an energy, if you like, or an opportunity cost, right? Each of us, no matter what size home we live in, only has a defined amount of space for storing stuff and a defined amount of time for spending on it. And therefore, the more mindful we can be of what we populate our home and our playroom with, the better. Plus, as you've probably seen from my previous videos, I really believe there's a price to pay from having too many toys or having the wrong types of toys. And that can cost our children dearly in terms of how they play, the quality of their play and how immersed in play they become. So with a mind to all of this, I've come up with the four categories of the types of things I would invest in if you have the inclination and the ability to do so uh, in this holiday season or in birthdays or any other gift giving time. So here are the four types of gifts that I think can be absolutely wonderful for a child to receive. The first is perishable gifts. Now keep in mind that I'm a simplicity parenting coach so I care a lot about decluttering and having minimalistic environments. That's not to say that I don't love toys, stuff, art supplies, I do. I just care about having the right types of them and having them in the right quantities and at the right times. Perishable gifts are fantastic because they are gifts that run out. The most classic example of this is art supplies, right? Art supplies, things like Play-Dohs, paints, crayons, anything that runs out that you use up, okay? Glues, um, these are things that really are wonderful tools and opportunities for children to explore creativity. And if you haven't seen my video about promoting creativity in children, then head, head on over and watch that next. But um, having those things at home is just wonderful. Even things that aren't supposed to run out, but usually they do, things like kinetic sand, um, can be a great thing uh, to give as a gift. So if, uh, if you have grandparents asking you what to get, or if you yourself aren't sure, having great stock of paper or canvases to paint on, or um, glitter um, and sequins to use, buttons, um, all sorts, all manner of art supply um, can be a wonderful perishable gift. The second category of gift that I love to focus on, and this one brings me personally particular joy, is heirloom gifts. What do I mean by heirloom gifts? Well, the main thing to consider with an heirloom gift is, would my grandchild be able to play with this? Is there a quality and a durability to this gift that means it will last for years to come? Um, is this gift something that I could have played with as a child? So that means it won't be faddy, it won't have characters on it that are, you know, time, that, that kind of lose their popularity after a certain amount of time. It will be a gift that stands the test of time, that seems like a childhood staple. Okay, things like beautiful, strong, amazing blocks, things like Lego, big gifts like a rocking horse or a trampoline or a bike, um, things that you know are really going to serve your child in a strong and amazing way and are going to stand the test of time. So for these gifts you don't want them to be ultra specific, they should always be open-ended invitations to play, something that you can imagine into in lots of different ways. 
Heirloom gifts don't have to be expensive. There are smaller and larger gifts that fall into this category. Okay, things as simple as a small wooden rattle for a baby and things as big and fun as a swing set or a trampoline. Um, my indoor swing video is a perfect example of an heirloom gift. Hanging up a swing or a rock climbing wall in your home be a really substantial gift that stands the test of time and generations. The next category of gift is experiences. Now, experiences really are the ultimate gift. Experiences can be as small as giving your child a token for a wrestling match with them or a book marathon where you read as many books as they want or tickling if your child likes that and wants it or a token for, you know, extra hugs, extra quality time, a day at work with you. Um, any kind of quality time can be the ultimate gift to a child. And if you want to turn that into an actual tangible gift, all you have to do is make a card or a token for them to cash in on. Um, but they can also be, you know, physical gifts such as tickets to a show, tickets to a trip, to a train ride or a bus ride for young children that's super exciting. An experience could be going somewhere that they've never been or watching a movie that they've never seen. Think of an experience as something that takes time and then ends. So it could be playing a game with you. It could be reading certain books with you, seeing a movie or a show. I'm also putting into this category subscriptions, such as a subscription to a magazine, a subscription to some kind of activity box that brings a new experience to a child. Uh, those can be fantastic gifts and they can fall into the perishable um, gifts as well. So they're not things that clutter up your home, hopefully, um, but they are things that give a child really renewed value over time. And finally, the fourth category, which is one that I really love, is tools. Just like adults love to receive tools that help them promote their, their trade or their hobby, such as cooking or sewing or handyman work, um, kids love to receive tools as well. And gifting someone tools is a way of showing that you value uh, their hobbies and their interests and that you want to promote their ability to do that and their investment in it. So whether it's things like a magnifying glass, binoculars, a microscope for slightly older children, um, it could be things like a 3D printer for a bigger child, or a sewing machine, or a sewing kit. Um, it could be things like actual handyman tools, a hammer, um, and pliers, etc. My kids love just simple math tools like a compass, um, and rulers, a tape measure, and those are things that kids can really, really enjoy. Think about scales. And my only tip here is get real tools, even if they're child size. Use the real metal tools if you feel that it's safe and that you can trust your child with them. Because um, plastic tools that are copycats of real tools really run their course very quickly and don't give the children the satisfaction of that weighty feeling of a metal item that is real and is meaningful. A company that I love for this is The Curious Chef, who make knives and kitchen tools that children can use and that are safe but also real. I created a PDF gift guide to help you to find these items, especially items that I have personally tried out with my three children and that I love and recommend and that fall into the categories of perishable, heirloom, experiences and tools. Um, so you will find that PDF download on the blog post of this video. So head on over to theparentingjunkie.com if you're not there already and download the PDF guide. And just know that all the links in that guide, all the pictures that you see are clickable and they will take you straight through to places where you can purchase uh, those gifts. So I hope that that helps you in finding the right kind of gifts. And of course, you can share this guide with people who are asking you what your kids might want for the holidays. So you can share it with grandparents or friends if you feel that that's appropriate and comfortable for you to do. Keep on loving parenting and parenting from love because your kids need you almost as much as you need them. Goodbye!